Shalom. Before I begin this video, first and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Mahawa Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that still to this very day continue to rule very well, that's continually feeding the flock through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Shalom to the whole elect that is our given diligence in this work to make your carnal election sure by spreading this ministry and this gospel to the other members of the whole elect in faith, true and sincerity, and also in all charity. Now, our topic of this video is going to be entitled, What is the Meaning of Love Your Enemies? All right, because uh, in modern day Christianity, uh, they, they teach you that. You know, to, to love your enemies is, is to basically love everybody. You know, even the ones that that give you harsh hell, you know, that make, that make your life a living hell, you know, you have to basically love them even though they're doing all these things to you, man. And basically with their, their definition of love is completely different than what the scriptures say what love is because the scriptures blatantly tell you what love really means man it's not that warm bubbly feeling that you have within yourself you know towards a, another individual you know or a companion but the scriptures teach you what love is man all right and really just to give an example of what love is look at the camp great millstone all right even though people look at us and say, oh, you guys, all you do is hate, you know, this and that, you, you know, um, you curse out everybody, you know, use profanity and this and that. Well, they don't understand what Yahweh about Shemel Shai is like. You know, they don't understand what man or person he is and what type of spirit that um, he, he um, exhibits towards his men. All right. That's why the scriptures say, man, it says, uh, Light is coming to the world and darkness comprehended not because these people are in gross darkness. They don't understand what, what it means to be in the light. That's why the things that are, are are light to the men of the Lord are darkness to them. You know, they, they take bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. They take light for dark and dark for light, like the scriptures say. So topics like love your enemies, even though the scriptures speak about um, taking vengeance against the Lord's enemies. Because the Lord himself even has enemies Alright King David the, A man after the most high's heart He even has enemies Alright The prophets They have enemies Alright The scriptures even speak about the enemies of the cross So How So why would the scriptures speak about love your enemies But yet you have Different other scriptures that, that says Something completely different That's why The spirit has to be on you to understand what it means when it says love your enemies right and i'm gonna go ahead and jump into it this is a scripture where it speaks about that matthew the fifth chapter also in the book of luke it says the same thing but in this chapter the fifth chapter right in the um i was like fifth chapter in the uh, 44th verse it says but i say unto you love your enemies bless them that curse you do good to them they hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. All right. Now, what does it mean by love your enemies and blessing them that curse you and doing good, good to them that hate you? All right. Doing good to, to uh, the individuals around us, doing good to these people is what? Doing the work. Now, I got another precept which uh, lines up with what I'm saying. Right. This book of John, the 15th chapter, is actually two uh, verses, two scriptures. Uh, John, the 15th chapter, the 12th verse, it says, uh, This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Right. Now, actually, uh, that's not the one I'm looking for. The one I'm looking for is. Uh, First John in the book of First John, should I say? First John, the fifth chapter, in the uh, third verse, it says, "For this 
it's the love of the Most High. This is the love of the Most High, Yahweh, which that's the name of the Heavenly Father and His Son, Yahweh Shai. All right, it says, for this is the love of the Most High. This is what the definition of, the, of, of love is according to our Lord, Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, which is the same power of the Bible that you read every Sunday. All right. Every time you pick up the Bible and you see the word of God, this, this is this is what his definition of love is, man. Not our definition, but his definition. All right. That we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. All right. That's what love is. Love is to keep his commandments, which once again, like I mentioned before, the main commandment now, which is directed towards his men, the sons of Israel, which consists of the so-called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans. Which their true nationality is Israel Alright Our, The commandment that we are to do Right now at this point in time Is to teach And to teach is keeping Keeping the commandments Alright Because Yahweh Shai spoke about uh, What what two main commandments um, Are done When we're doing the work Actually let me get that in a second but I'm going to go back uh, Grab another one This is the book of John The 14th chapter in the uh, 15th verse It says uh, If you love me Keep my commandments Alright So if you love Yahweh Shai Alright I'm talking to you so called Negroes, Hispanics and Native Americans If you really love the Lord then you keep the commandments man In which once again his commandment is to feed his sheep That's what he told uh, Peter when he um, was sitting down with him all right, He told him three times says look if you love me Feed my lambs and my sheep and how, did, and how did he do that He went out and he taught He did the work What are we doing today Going out and teaching and doing the work Out in the highways and byways So we're fulfilling that scripture where it says uh, to, to love Yahweh Bashim Al Shai And actually that's the one I'm, I'm going to get uh, Which I mentioned earlier Right Like if I can uh, get in a timely manner. That's uh, Matthew's the twenty-second chapter in the um, verse uh, thirty-five. Matthew twenty, chapter twenty-two, and verse thirty-five. It says, "Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law?'" All right. So he asked him, he said, look, what is, what is the greatest commandment in the law? All right. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. So in other words, the way that we're supposed to love Yahweh by Shemel Shai with all our heart and our mind and our soul is by putting our all our efforts into this work to get uh, this, uh, this, this get basically to get the job done, man, because this is a job that we have. To um, seal the elect Or to bring back the elect should I say And bring them back to the fold Once again that's why he told Peter To feed his lambs and his sheep Alright It says um, This is verse 38 It said this is uh, the first and great commandment And the second is like unto it So the second one is just like the first one It says um uh, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All right, and how do we love our neighbor? By doing the work. I give you an example. Just like you see uh, your neighbor, which that word neighbor is synonymous with uh, brother. And who are our brothers? The ones that are a part of the nation of Israel. It's not talking about the, uh, the next person, even though he's an Elamite or uh, Ishmaelite or whatever other nation that he is. It doesn't mean that just because he's he's next to you or whatever or you know this person you know it doesn't mean that that that's your brother not all the nations are your brothers man all right because i mean it's common sense that your brother would be someone who's 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 uh, of the same family line i mean that's even in today's world today's society even today's uh, family structure you have a brother you both have the same father all right same thing with us we have brothers 
that's a part of the nation of Israel, we have the same father, which go back to who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. Now, uh, it says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, which was doing the work. All right. In which, um, that going back to that example I was speaking about earlier, I didn't expound on it um, as well as I wanted to. But in that example that I'm using is that if you see your brother in the fire, right, or about to uh, fall off a cliff, about to go into some sort of danger, what do you do? You pull him out of it, man. It can be, uh, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, you know, in a soft manner. You know, that you, you can pull him out by force. All right. And they're not going to look at you in, in an evil manner. They're going to look at you with, with uh, thanks. All right. But in essence, or actually to go in, go in depth on that example, really a wise man would uh, thank a person that, that, that pulled him out of the fire. Not because not all, all Israelites are wise. All right. That's why you have two thirds of Israel and then you have the one third. Only a certain uh, number of Israelites have wisdom. All right, and that are wise. So with that example, <clears throat> them pulling them out of the fire by us doing this work, we're pulling them out. Of, we're trying to pull them out of the fire. Now, you go into the book of Ezekiel, the thirty-third chapter. Um, it speaks about us blowing the trumpet and warning the people. Now, if we don't do it, then the blood is on our hands. But we have been warning the people, so therefore, the blood is off our hands, and we're still trying to get that blood off our hands because we're still out in the highways and byways. All right. There's still work that needs to be done. So until then, you know, we're still going to um, do this work and get the blood off our hands so that you will have no excuse. And that's how the Lord wants it. All right. Now, verse 40 says on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. See, that hangs all all. All of the uh, the laws, statutes and commandments and of the prophets. Because the prophets were also doing the same thing that the Lord is, is commanding us to do, and yet that He commanded His disciples to do. Okay, now I want to go back to um, Matthew's the uh, fifth chapter, and I want to look up that word enemies, right? Because it's a, it's a point that I want to make real quick. That word enemies in the Greek is a uh, uh, ekthros, right? Ekthros. Which means uh, hated, odious, hateful, and which uh, one of the definitions here is uh, used of men as at enmity with the Most High by their sin. All right. And when you look at this definition and apply it to today, you know, by us not following the law, says and commandments to the, to the full extent. Has made us uh, at enmity with the Most High, but through Yahweh Shai, now we're being reconciled with Yahweh, the Heavenly Father. All right. Now, another key point that I want to make in this, uh, uh, bringing out this definition, is that you have another nation that is saying that they are the people of the Most High, and that the uh, the law says commandments and the covenant belongs to them, and which they are the nation of Edom, which is the so-called white man, which they are going around today calling themselves the Jews. All right. And they uh, claim to have the laws that the laws near and dear unto them. Why? Because they, they take the Bible upon themselves and call themselves the children of the Most High. So therefore, since they want to use that to uh, use that notion, guess what? The Lord is going to exact the law against them because they're guilty of it. All right, and also too because they, they are brother. Technically, they they are brothers as well, man. Uh, going back to Jacob and Esau. Okay, and I'm gonna grab that scripture. Uh, let's see, slot you. It's the book of Leviticus, the 24th chapter. Uh, this is the 24th chapter in the 19th verse. And this is according to the law, right? 
like I mentioned before, they want to hang on to the law. The 19th verse says, and if a man cause a blemish in his neighbor, as he had done, so shall it be done to him. Breach for breach, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, as he hath caused a blemish in a man, so shall it be done, done to him again. See? Now, there's another scripture in the law that applies to them, the so-called white man. Exodus, the 21st chapter, in the 16th verse, it says, And he that stealeth a man and selleth him, or if he be found in his hand, he shall surely be put to death. Now, did we not just read what, the, what, what it means to love your neighbor or to love your enemies? Guess what? This is it. All right. Now, does that mean we're going to go and uh, put a so-called white man to death right now? No, it doesn't. All right. Because that that privilege belongs to Yahweh Shai, our Lord. Because scripture speak about uh, him. Make, uh, actually, his, he made a statement in the scripture saying that vengeance belongs to him and he delights in judgment. So for us to go and take this into our own hands, we really will be robbing Yahweh Shai, our Lord, of that of his delight, which he is. He, he's his title is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, man. He deserves that honor. So for us to go and take it to our own, put it in our own hands, then we'll be taking out that, that honor and that delight away from him. He doesn't want that, man. All right. But that pretty much wraps up this video on this lesson. Now you got the uh, the full breakdown of the scripture, uh, love thy enemies or love your enemies in the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, 44 verse. And the Lord's will, this was uh, edifying to the body of Yahweh Bashmiel Shai to the hopeful elect. And until next time, once again, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashmiel Shai, Rahab Kakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that still to this very day continually rule very well. And uh, Shalom, peace and safety, salutations to the hopeful elect that is also uh, plowing in his work, giving diligence to make your calling lecture sure, and faith, truth, and sincerity, and all charity. And with that, 